Hi there, this is Chef Martin once again from the ThermoWorks Barbecue Patio, and today we're going to bring the heat with Fidel Astorga of Utah Barbecue Company. Uh, he's got some great stuff for us to cook. I'm excited. What are we making today? So today we're going to make a pollo asado. And pollo asado really means just grilled chicken. What I really like about this recipe, it's, it's pretty simple. There's only four ingredients. First thing we need for the marinade is two cups of uh, Sunny Delight. That packs some real acidic punch to it, huh? It does. It also has a nice uh, sweet flavor at the very end. And with the rub that we're using, you're going to get a little bit of sweet and salty. So this is uh, actually something I found in the store the other day that I've actually really, really loved. It's called Pollo Sal by Lari's Seasoning. And all we're doing is uh, three tablespoons of that. Mm. Three. Nice. All right. So the other thing we need is uh, Sonosa by Goya. And all we're really using is just two little packets. A lot of this is just additional seasoning and it's more for the, the color that it gives it. Okay. Give it's nice dark red color. Yeah, that would. All we're gonna do is go ahead and mix it up. As you can see, that just gets a nice dark color. It's actually gonna give the, the meat as well, kind of nice, nice color to it as well when we're searing it off. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and leave that there. Let it set for a minute. So now we have, we have chicken. I, uh, I've noticed that usually kind of where some of the stores in my area, they do skin on, bone in. I usually like to use the boneless, skinless chicken. The only difference is if it had a bone, kind of lay it flat like this, fillet the bone off, and pretty much do the same thing that I would do to the boneless, skinless thighs. So for me, anything that I don't want to eat, I trim off. So since this is boneless, I usually make sure that there's no bones or uh, bone shears. Yeah, sometimes there's little like chips of bone still attached to the meat there, right, huh? Yeah, right. you gotta, so check, check those. And there's also usually a, a nice little uh, chunk of cartilage that I want to make sure that I make, uh, that I want to go ahead and remove. So all we're going to do is trim some of the fat and it's, it's a very quick, simple trim. There's really not much to it. Um, Okay, so yeah, that's just the just a little bit of excess fat there on the edge there, huh? Correct, correct. Okay. And it's it's really not much of a much of a trim, like you said, just the excess fat and some of the little pieces that kind of hang out. So Fidel, you're using chicken thighs because that's the best kind of chicken, huh? Because like like breast always overcooks and dries out. So uh, or, or or what's your feeling about using breast? Why are we using thigh? Thighs, I think, have more more flavor to them than okay. the, the white meat because it's dark meat. Um, I also think you can take them up a little bit higher compared to compared to cooking chicken breast. Yeah. I just think they have more flavor, a little Great. bit more forgiving as well, especially when you're cooking nice, hot and fast. So we're just trimming off the excess fat here on these, making sure there's no cartilage in here, uh, no bone chips that may have survived the butchering, uh, to make sure that every bite that we get on these boneless, skinless thighs is a tasty bite. So now that chicken is trimmed, I'm gonna go ahead and put the chicken in the marinade. Ideally, I like to leave it for 24 to 48 hours. Um, but luckily we did it, I marinated the chicken yesterday, so we're kind of giving it a 24 hour marinade. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, cook that chicken to show you how to do that. So all we're doing is putting the, the chicken in into the bag. And usually this marinade is probably good for about anywhere between 15 and 20 pieces of chicken. Okay. Which is great for about what we have here. It's a healthy right. sized dinner full of people there. All right, gotcha. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Well, actually, no. Oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 if you don't mind holding that open, that's great. Hold that open. Okay, so because at home, I usually go ahead and lay it flat. Kind of make sure that the marinade gets in between all the, all the nooks and crannies. Make sure that everything gets a, a nice coat and a marinade. Like I said, I'm leaving it in the refrigerator for about 24 hours. Every time I'm kind of walking by, I, I like to go and give it a nice little flip. Uh, when, I go, when I'm walking by again or I remember, I give it another flip. Um, 
And the reason <laughs> I like using a double bag is um, <laughs> it's happened before where I put it in the refrigerator and for some reason I didn't seal it correctly or there's a little hole and it's made a big old mess. Oh yeah. So this is the only reason why I'm double bagging it. I really don't want to make a mess just in case. Um, there is a hole in the bag. So we do is go ahead and grab it. Oops. And there you go. Just go ahead and put that fridge in the fridge for uh, overnight. We've gotten cleaned up a little bit. We've got the uh, cold uh, pre-marinated chicken here. What What's right. the next steps? So let's go ahead and uh, take it out of the bag and just put it in this uh, in this aluminum pan. Okay. So like I said, just double bagging everything, make sure I don't make a mess. As you can see that this chicken has a nice, nice little uh, golden color to it, which comes from that marinade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. it's gone into the meat there. I can definitely see that. Right. So that actually, all we're really doing here is going ahead, putting the chicken kind of in the middle of the grill. And we've got the, the smoker set to what temperature there? So we're cooking the chicken at 300 degrees. So cooking at 300 degrees lets me know that about 20 minutes, I need to start checking to make sure that I'm not overcooking the chicken. So we'll uh, check back on that in 25, 30 minutes? Yes, so yeah. So in about 25, 30 minutes, like I said, we'll go ahead, use our thermal pan, probe all the chicken, make sure it's up where I want it. Um, we want to make sure that the chicken is about 150 degrees internal, and then we'll go ahead and sear it off on the Traeger, and I'll show you that step when we get there in about 20, 25 minutes. So the chicken's cooking, and we're right. going to make some toppings for, 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 for the tacos we're making, right? I see some avocados, some aguacates. So what's up? Okay. I, guacamole on the horizon? <laughs> there is some guacamole, but I just found out some pretty sad, sad news. Yeah. Apparently you're allergic to avocados. I'm allergic to avocados. It is the curse of my food-loving life. It's terrible. But uh, I'm happy to help make some. Great. I just will not get to have any of your delicious, delicious guacamole. Well, this is... Uh, this is something that I really like, and it, to me, it's kind of a blend between a pico de gallo and a guacamole. Okay. So I'm kind of mixing the two and kind of making my own to do a topping for the chicken. So let's go ahead and get started with the, with the guacamole. First thing we do, we're gonna cut up some avocados. Good looking avocados. Yeah. These are nice and ripe. Martin is uh, going ahead, taking the avocado out of the shell put it into the bowl. We'll, we'll use about three or four avocados depending on on the amount we want to make. You know, if you want to make more, go ahead and put more avocados. If you're going to want to make a smaller portion, go ahead and use less avocados for this. But I think we'll probably use the four. I like a chunky avocado, so we're going to go ahead and break it down. But we're not going to go pretty far down to like a pure puree, more of a large chunks of avocado in our topping for the tacos. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add two thirds cup of onions. We're gonna add two thirds cup of tomatoes. I'm gonna use one third cup of cilantro. Mm, cilantro. So this is where well, we always get in a fight in our home and how much jalapeno to put into it. All the jalapeno. All the jalapeno. Okay. Go for There's it. about a third of a third of a cup. Is that like one jalapeno, two jalapenos? That's a one jalapeno, one large one jalapeno. One large jalapeno. Okay, great. Okay. So I like a lot of citrus in, in my avocado, so we'll go ahead and put a, a lemon. But just be careful because sometimes you can go too far and add too much lemon. So what I'm kind of doing here is pouring the, the juice into my hand and make sure that I catch all the seeds. The last thing you want is a bunch of seeds in your avocado. Now, you're using uh, lemon. Uh, do you also like lime? Does it matter? Can I use any citrus? Is orange okay big, or what, what's up with, with that? I've never used oranges. I have used lime, but I do like lemon because it has more of an acidic flavor to it than limes. Okay. All the avocados. So now we're just going to go ahead and break it up. And I'm just using the fork on the back side. 
I'm not trying to, like I said, puree, just kind of break them up. Just a really chunky guacamole we're going for here, kind of. Correct, correct. Pico mole, I don't know, yeah. Pico mole, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good term for it. Guaca de gallo? Oh, okay. Gua <laughs> that's just me thinking I'm funny there. Okay. I thought you were funny. Okay. So now that we have all the ingredients in the bowl, we're breaking it down. As you can see, we have nice little chunks of avocado, nice chunks of tomato, onions, cilantro. Okay, so to finish it off, and this, I can't really give you an exact measurement because it's more to taste. So it's the bacon jalapeno rub, which has... Um, a lot of the garlic, the jalapenos, the, mm. the spices that you want in a traditional, untraditional guacamole. So <laughs> we'll go ahead. You mean bacon isn't traditional in guacamole? So we'll go ahead and mix that in. And that also adds the salt that we need, right? Like it that, does. That, that, it that does. Gives us it has the, the, the garlic salt, the salt. So let's go ahead and... I don't know. I'm yeah, try this. yeah, go ahead. Okay, and, we'll go, you, ahead and, you, you go ahead and use your fork and then try we'll, it. we'll get yeah, a different one if we need to. Okay, that needs a little bit more. I'll, I'll use a spoon. Okay. Actually, just to let everybody know, we're using a different spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and try that as well. Okay. All right. I think we're there. So we'll just go ahead and wait for the tacos to be done and add and that to our topping. So, so, so we've got the guacamole made, we got the chicken on the grill, and then um, we're not going to show you how to do this, but we're going to warm up some tortillas for these uh, tacos too. And we can also do that in the time that the chicken's cooking, right? Correct, correct. All right. But as I said, usually I like to wait till the very last minute. I'm not a big fan of cold tortillas. Right, so. nice fresh warm tortillas. Correct. So Ooh. usually we make the tacos as we go, as you're ready to eat, ready to serve. So Just warm them up as, as, as you're ready? Correct. Okay, correct. cool, cool. So Fidel, it smells really good, and we've been about 25 minutes. Should we check the temps on the chicken? Yeah, let's go ahead and check the internal temperature. Um, Okay, we're about 150 degrees and that's kind of where I like them. So the next process of this is moving over the, the chicken to give it a nice sear. What we're trying to do is make sure that we give it a nice little crisp without burning them. So if, if you guys notice on the, on the Traeger, you have the diffuser plate that kind of goes down at an angle. So the heat kind of rolls around out through the sides. So the hottest portion of the grill would be right along the edge. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and move the chicken, chicken over. So right up front where that heat can right. kind of come right at it. Exactly. Okay. So all we're doing is just going and moving the chicken, giving it a little sear. And that orange color we were talking about is on there so deep. It's, it's just beautiful. Yeah, and that comes from the marinade mm -hmm. and the rubs. Backside. Actually, go ahead and put some of that back there. Nice. So, with these searing, roughly how long are we looking for? Our, our, well, we're going for a temperature, not a time, but about how long is it going to take? Do you know? It's usually about anywhere between five and 10 minutes. So, to me, uh, chicken thighs are done about 165. However, I'm not a big fan of that texture. So, I like to take them up to about 170 and let the carry over between 175 and 180 is where I like the chicken thighs to be. Okay, cool, so, yeah. Yeah, you have a more like shreddy, tender texture there. It's not so rubbery there. Correct, correct, which, which is great, which is a great texture for, for tacos. So kind of now what we're trying to do, like I was saying before, is we're gonna make sure that we're not burning the chicken. We're also making sure that we're not overcooking the chicken. And that's where, you know, your thermal pen kind of comes in, does the work for you. So we're just gonna keep a close eye on it and then we'll go ahead and check in about three or four minutes. And if we need to, we'll go ahead and flip it so you don't get one char on one side and not get the char on the other side. Okay, great. So. Smells amazing. Great, thanks.
Um, we let the chicken go for a couple minutes, uh, searing. We flipped it once. Um, should we check the temps on it, see if it's done? Yeah, let's go ahead and check, check them. That char looks beautiful. Thank you. Okay. So most of this chicken should be about, about the temperature we're looking for. But my nose is telling me that it's time to eat. It is, it is. Let's do it. Let's make some tacos. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start with some chicken. Uh, just gonna... So we're not shredding this, we're just slicing we're this. We're just right? slicing like it up. Nice thin slices. Correct, and probably Give another side, a little turn, slice that up. Okay. Just try to make a little small bite size. Okay. So okay. not getting big chunks like coming off in the taco. Okay. Correct. So we'll go ahead. I usually like to double up on the tortillas. So go ahead. I said I like nice, healthy tacos. Yeah, man. Add that up. Oh, yeah. I can smell the masa from the tortillas. And you prefer <laughs> corn tortillas for this, right? Not flour tortillas. I do, I do. I think I like the texture and the taste more of uh, the corn than the flour tortillas. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So, this one here, since you're allergic to avocado. We'll go ahead and use the pico. Appreciate that. Just get a nice little coat. Middle. These two here, we go ahead and use the avocado. Stir. And that is pretty much it. I'm going to eat my taco. Mm. Well done, sir. Good. Mm. I love the jalapeno. I love how juicy the chicken is. I love the flavor from that marinade. The whole thing is wonderful, Good. wonderful. Well, Fidel, these are some fantastic tacos. Thank you so much for bringing them to us and teaching us how to make them. I'm gonna eat more when the cameras are turned off. So thank you so much for being here. Great, thank you for having me. Uh, any, anytime. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get notified every time there is uh, new content from us. Um, until next time, uh, this is Chef Martin and Fidel bringing the heat See you next time.